Welcome to How to Get Started with Assumptions Mapping. My name is David J. Bland. I'm the founder and CEO of Precoil, an innovation consulting agency in the San Francisco Bay Area. And today I'm going to help you start unpacking some of these leap of faith assumptions with your team. I'm going to give you insights into how I mentor startups in Silicon Valley and also corporations on how to de-risk their new product initiatives. There are three types of assumptions I normally see in new product development. Desirable, viable, and feasible. Desirable being, do they want this? Viable being, should we do this? And feasible being, can we do this? So let's start unpacking those questions and the very specific questions for each theme. What does it mean for your product or service to be desirable? What does it mean for it to be viable? What does it mean for it to be feasible? These aren't all the questions I use, but I'm gonna walk you through these three themes and these are the top questions I use with each team. So let's pause for a moment before jumping into the exercise to unpack what I mean by teams in this context. The team is cross-functional. That means engineering, product, and design are represented on the team. Now this makes a lot of sense because if you think of the types of assumptions we just covered, desirable, viable, and feasible, each one of these map really well. Desirable, meaning design, viable, meaning product, and feasible, meaning engineering. Next, the team is 100% dedicated. They're not multitasking across five or six different projects, they're focused on one. Working in this style was hard enough. If you're not focused, it's nearly impossible. The team is data influenced. That means they're measuring outcomes, not just burning down a backlog of features of outputs. The team is customer centric. That means they have the ability to create deep customer empathy and keep the customer top of mind as they develop the product or service. And finally, the team has a sense of momentum. They have daily stand-ups, they have weekly planning, they have bi-weekly retrospectives. They're moving along really quickly, uncovering some of these risky assumptions so that we can deliver the right thing. So now that we have a common understanding of what team is, let's start unpacking some of these desirability assumptions. The problem our customer wants to solve is, what does your customer struggle with? Or what need do they want to fulfill? Our customer cannot solve this problem today because, what obstacles prevented customers from solving this? The outcome our customer wants to achieve is it's the qualitative and quantitative outcomes that happen in a customer's life. Write these answers on orange stickies. Next, let's start talking about some of the viability assumptions that you're making. Our acquisition strategy for obtaining new customers is what are the one or two main acquisition channels for your product or service? Our customers will use our product repeatedly because what would your customers want to come back to do and how often will they do it? We will generate revenue by, what's the primary way you're going to make money? Write these answers on green stickies. Now let's talk about some of the feasibility assumptions you're making. Our biggest technical or engineering challenges are, what are the major architectural challenges that can get in your way of building? Our biggest legal or regulatory risk would be, what laws or regulations could prevent you from operating? Our team is uniquely positioned to win because what makes your team well suited to beat the market? Write these answers on blue stickies. So next we're going to map out these assumptions. It's great as a first step to get them out of your heads and onto some stickies, but it's kind of a mess right now. And it's really hard to make sense of it. And this is a great way to build a common understanding as a team. So you notice we have a two by two here, important and unimportant and known and unknown. And these aren't binary, but it's important to understand the spectrum of where your assumptions fall as a team. So while this may look intimidating, it comes together pretty quickly. Usually what happens, a team member will take, let's say one of the desirability assumptions and they'll say, look, how much do we know about this and uh, how important is it? And let's say it goes here. Now the next sticky that goes up you're really asking yourself and asking the team, is this more important or less important than that one? And do we know more or less about it? So let's say one of the other ones ends up to the right. Now, it's not so much about exactly where it ends up, but it's much more about the conversation. So teams kind of start adding these up. There's these fascinating debates about, is this important or unimportant? Is this known or unknown? And because you have this through the lens of three different people at least, then you get this really rich perspective on where your assumptions may be. And after a healthy debate of what's important and what's not, and how much do we know about it and how much is unknown, then you end up with this interesting map of your assumptions. 
We can learn a few things from this map. First off, stay away from the bottom left. Your team has had this rich conversation and dialogue that things that ended up in the bottom left are known and unimportant and you want to defer commitment on these. You don't want to run a lot of experiments and waste a lot of time, effort, and energy on this quadrant. What can happen here is you can give the illusion of progress because you're completing experiments, but you're not moving the ball forward in any meaningful way. On the other hand, we have the top right quadrant. Now these are important and yet unknown assumptions you're making about your product or service as a team. Now these are leap of faith assumptions. You know, if these are proven false, it could cause your entire effort to fail. So this is where you wanna focus your time, effort, and energy as a team. Create hypotheses, design experiments, and drive out the uncertainty in your strategy. And because you've color coded these, indesirable, viable, and feasible, you can see where you're making those assumptions even in those themes. So that even gives you another level of insight into these lenses of assumptions that you're making as a team. So to recap, there are three types of assumptions I see in corporations and startups building new product and service. They're desirable, viable, and feasible. And while that's a great start, you need to unpack those into very specific questions around each theme, pull those out of your team, and then map those as a team and focus on the highly important yet unknown assumptions, your leap of faith assumptions to focus your experimentation. I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on how to get started with assumptions mapping. These are techniques I use with startups and corporations in Silicon Valley. If you need help and you're still stuck, send me an email at david at precoil.com and we'll even donate 30 minutes to help you get started. Happy experimenting.